materials you will need today include brushes of various sizes, a piece of cardboard to use as a palette, acrylic paint. I'm just using the Craftsmart acrylic paint because it is inexpensive and good for practicing. You will need paper, just a heavy cardstock type paper that can handle having paint on it. I'm using paper because it's good for doing a study and not a final piece. We're gonna need masking tape to tape down your paper. We're gonna need water and paper towel is also helpful. So we're gonna start by taping our paper down to our work surface. So you could tape it down onto a table or a board of some sort. It's just to help stop the paper from wrinkling and to make a nice little border. I've also printed out a reference photo of what I'm painting. I'm painting a foil balloon today. Reflective objects are really great practice because they have so many highlights and shadows. This is going to be a grayscale painting, so I've uh, printed my reference picture in black and white. So next I'm going to mix a mid-gray, halfway between black and white. I'm pouring a white blob and a black blob onto my palette separately. I'm trying to be cautious by not pouring the white paint into the black paint because I have no control that way and a lot of paint is wasted by trying to mix directly from the bottle. I'm also using a large brush because I'm painting the whole page with this middle gray. I'm doing this so that I can have a ground for the rest of the paint that I'm going to paint on and also because I feel like painting on a white page is kind of sad. I like having a middle ground like this. Okay, now I'm switching to a smaller brush to make my underpainting. The underpainting is kind of like a drawing of the outline of the object that I'm painting. I'm not going to use a pencil to sketch it like you might normally do. I'm going to use the edge of my square brush to do this. I'm using a dark gray that I've just mixed to create my outline or underpainting. And I'm looking at my reference image as I do this to try to make it as accurate as possible. Okay, all done my underpainting. Now I'm going to start on the values. So as you can see, in this image, there are all different shades of gray, almost all the way from very, very black to very, very white. In the right corner, you can see what is called a value scale, which is just showing a limited range of dark and light values. I'm gonna also use five values in my painting, so it's gonna be a simplified version of the reference photo, but I should still be able to get a good 3D effect happening, even with only five values. Don't forget to wash your brushes when switching from value to value. Also a note about brushes, notice how they have different shapes. These ones are all square or angled. And I also have a tiny one which is rounded. Try to pick the appropriate brush for what you are painting. If it's small highlights, a small brush like this one will work. Or if you're blocking in big areas, go with a larger brush. If you need clean lines, go with a square or angled brush. I'm now gonna mix my darkest value for the darkest shadows on this balloon. This is gonna be my number five dark value. So watch on the reference image where you can find the dark shadows. In acrylic painting, there's a rule that you should paint from the darkest values to the lightest values, which is why I am starting with the darkest shadows here. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some more white because I'm gonna go and mix my next lightest value. I've done with the darkest shadows. I'm gonna do my number four value now. So it should be slightly darker than my number five. And I'm trying to be conservative with how much paint I'm pouring out 
doing just slightly larger than a loony, a blob slightly larger than a loony. And remember, I'm painting this all in one sitting, but for you, you have limited time in class, so you may want to use even less paint. So now I'm blocking in the number four values. At this point I realized that there were some dark shadows that I missed, so some number fives. So I went back with that value and added them in. And now I'm back onto the number four value. So I'm kind of thinking of this now as like a paint by numbers type thing. So I'm looking carefully at the reference image and painting the appropriate value where it's located on the image. So now I'm gonna mix a slightly lighter gray. It's a number three or a middle gray. So again, slightly lighter than my number four. And as you guessed it, I will then block in those values and again, check my reference image to see where those values are located. And now I'm going to mix my number two value, a slightly lighter gray. And so I'm using white and just mixing in a tiny bit of black as I go so that I have control. And then I will block in those number two values. And one really good thing about acrylic painting is if you mess up, it's no big deal. You can just let the paint dry and paint over the mistake. So finally, it's time for the lightest highlights, the number one value. So this is a light, light gray, and I'm still going to actually go in with pure white and do some even lighter highlights later on. Now here I am blocking in the number one value. Okay, so the wrinkles in the foil are going to be shown using highlights, so the, the lightest gray. So here I am painting in thin lines to show those little wrinkles. So I'm looking at my reference image to see the direction and the angle that those lines should be painted in. And they're going to really help this look like a foil balloon. Okay, now here we go with the pure white using a tiny detail brush and just looking for all the little tiny highlights in my image. And I'm actually adding some in that aren't there but where I think they should be to make it really sort of pop out from the background. So now I'm going to address the background. Usually in painting, you're supposed to paint the background first and then the foreground. But I often will paint the background around the image so that I can kind of carve out the image a little bit more. So what I'm doing here is I've mixed a similar value to my number five value and I'm using this to make a shadow behind the balloon to sort of make it look like it's floating. Now I'm mixing, I've mixed a light gray similar to the number one and I'm filling out the rest. And right here, as you can see, I'm carving out the image to make the shape of the outline better where it's necessary to do so. And I'm now kind of trying to blend out the shadow and sort of put some interesting texture on the background as well.
And now what I'm doing is just adding some details, like for example, the balloon string and just some additional highlights just to make it really pop, some finishing touches. Then I remove the tape and I'm all done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.